What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for September 29th, 2020. It's Terraform Tuesday, which means I'm going to be having tacos later, and my child just handed me goldfish. Are these for me to eat? No, it's mine. Oh, they're for you. Okay, well, let me open up this bag of goldfish. Here you go, my dear. And special guest appearance. Thank you very much. Bye now. Anyway, so welcome to the show. This is my life. This is what we do. So it's Terraform Tuesday. It's also Taco Tuesday. I am 100% going to be making tacos right after this video. But first, I want to talk to you about using Terraform with Google Cloud because that's a thing that you might actually have to do at some point. I had to do it for a project and I'm going to say it was interesting. It was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But, you know, that's just life. So that's what I want to talk about today. I do have a couple other things to mention. Number one, my vault certification guide is currently being written. I have it published on LeanPub. The first two objectives are done and I'm working on the rest. So if you want to purchase it early, you're more than welcome to. If you want to wait, that's cool too. Whatever works for you. It's right next to my Terraform certification guide, so don't forget about that bad boy. And the last thing is that I will be giving at least one lightning talk at the HashiConf digital event. That's October 12th through the 15th. So if you haven't signed up, please go to HashiConf.com and register because it's free. And it's going to be like mostly Pacific time type events. Uh, this sort of bookends the European event that they did uh, few, uh, like two months ago or so that was more in the European time zone. So you get a little bit of both, right? So that's what I wanted to, uh, the little housekeeping items I had uh, before we get into the topic proper. Let's check in. How are you? How's it going? You having tacos today? Uh, uh, so what kind of tacos? That's what I want to know. We're going to be doing chicken tacos and some bean tacos. So like a little, little mix up of both. I think that's nice. And I have some... Uh, Chipotle's in Dobo that I'm going to cut up and throw in the beans because I like it a little spicy, but the kids, they just want the chicken and they don't want it too spicy. So, you know, you got to strike that balance. So hopefully you're striking a balance in your life this week. I'm struggling a little bit, but I'm going to get there. Let's talk about Terraform and Google Cloud. Okay, so why do I need to use Terraform with Google Cloud? Well, I'm doing a benchmark study for a vendor and they wanted me to compare multiple clouds and setting up an application in each cloud. You can imagine the clouds they were most interested in were the big three, Azure, AWS, and GCP. And so they wanted me to deploy an application in all three of them and use relatively similar services and specs for all three deployments and find out how long does it take to set up an environment? How long does it take to deploy an application? And how well does that application perform? This sounds like a job for Terraform, like the perfect job for Terraform. And you know that I know AWS pretty well. I know Azure pretty well, not a challenge, but Google, huh? I think I've used it once or twice, but uh, anyway, so it was a little challenging. So I want to share the configuration that I'm using and some of the challenges that I found. So let's go ahead and share out my screen so you can see it. I'll blow it up one. So it's a little easier to see what's going on here. Maybe I'll hide the command prompts. We're not going to need that. We're not using that. All right. So I have everything in a main.tf file for the most part. I did discover a few things along the way that I'll get to. The application that's supposed to be tested is a Node.js application that uses a MongoDB backend. This is not an uncommon thing. And in the process of specking out these different clouds, I learned something interesting. If you're using Microsoft Azure, Cosmos DB has a Mongo compliant API that you can apply when you're setting up your Cosmos DB. So even though it's not actually Mongo, if you send Mongo style commands to it, it'll respond in kind. So that's fine. Likewise, AWS has document DB, which again, it's not technically Mongo, but it has a Mongo friendly API. So you can use the Mongo driver for that. Awesome. Let's go over to Google. It has Firebase, which wah, 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 doesn't have a Mongo-friendly API. Now, I could have tried to switch out the driver for this Node.js application, but that's a little bit above my pay grade and not something I really wanted to do. So I had to come up with a solution. And what was my solution? Well, there's a third-party service from MongoDB called Atlas that will deploy a MongoDB cluster in the public cloud of your choice. So again, perfect use for Terraform. Not only do I need to get 
three different clouds involved for these different deployments, I now have a third party service I need to deploy and configure and I want to use one tool for all this. I can I can use Terraform. So here's what I realized I have to do with Google Cloud you need to supply some information to the provider, stuff like the billing account, the org ID, the region that you want to deploy resources in. And if you're gonna use App Engine, which is what I was using in this case, you also have to specify a location ID, which is not the same as the region for Google Cloud. So I learned that, that was fun. And then getting into the MongoDB Atlas provider, that has a set of information that it needs mostly the public and private key and your organization ID. I also have the database password in here and don't worry, I don't have this database running anywhere right now. So, you know, take that password, do whatever you want with it. It's not in use at the moment. And obviously in a production scenario, you would never have this hard coded in your Terraform config file. I'm probably going to strip it out, you know, before I push this up to GitHub. But anyway, scrolling down, we get into the configuration of the providers. Google, you'll notice the only thing that I'm saying is version and region. Why, why can I get away with that? Why, why can I just do that? Because the credentials I'm using an environment variable for. So the way that I'm doing the credentials is I downloaded a JSON service account credential file, and then I have the environment variable Google underscore credentials pointing to the path of where I have that JSON doc stored. By doing that, I don't have to hard code the credentials in or pass them in using a variable. They're just in an environment variable. So that's one thing I learned. Scrolling down a little bit more, what I wanted to do. So like if you've used Azure, you know, everything kind of sits in a resource group. You have to create a resource group for resources. In AWS, you have to have an account. That's kind of the atomic unit. You need to have an account that you're going to put resources in and a region, and that's about it. But a lot of the times the VPC almost functions as that encapsulating thing because most things need to live in a VPC. In the world of Google, it's the project. Things reside inside a project, and a project rolls up to a billing subscription, but project like it's its own thing. And so I learned all of that in the process of deploying this. And for each environment that I spun up, I wanted it to be in its own project. So in order to do that, I had to create a project for each run. How did I do that? Well, first I had to come up with an ID for that project. And so I used this random resource to generate a random ID and use the prefix of the workspace that I'm currently using. So I called each workspace run whatever number. So run one, run two, and then that would get appended with this byte length of four that I could then use for my Google project configuration. And because I'm creating a project and not using an existing one, I have a resource that creates that project named after the workspace. So I know which run this involved. It needs a unique project ID. So I managed to shoehorn that in there. You need the billing account that this project is gonna roll up to and the org ID. So you need all of that information to create a project. You also need to enable services on the project because another thing that I learned about Google Cloud, which is very different than Azure and AWS, when you create a new project, it only has a, it barely has any APIs enabled by default. So you have to go and enable these APIs, which are essentially services, if you want to use any of those services, which is very different. When you create a new Azure account, it kind of has all the regular APIs and services already enabled. And same thing with AWS. Sometimes you'll run into a service that's not enabled, but a lot of them are just enabled out of the box. They're trying to make it easier for you. Google's like, nah, dog, you need to enable these services so you can use this resource, Google Project Service, to enable the services. And then there's this cool thing that somebody else came up with. Take no credit for this. You're basically using a for each meta argument to create multiples of this resource and creating a set for all of the APIs you want to enable. And it just loops through each API. It sets the service argument equal to whatever that service is in the set and applies it to the project that we just created. And so it'll just iterate through. The other thing I learned is that some services are beta services and some are not. So if you have a beta service you need to enable, oh, you need to do that 
in a separate block using the project service beta provider. So you have to specify the Google beta provider in here if you want to use a beta service, which you probably won't know about until you try to deploy it and it fails because you don't have that service enabled. So more fun. Then finally, I get to create my app engine here, which the app engine all takes as a project and a location ID because all the actual configuration information about an app engine goes in the app.yaml file, which will be part of the source code for the application. <laughs> so <laughs> learned a lot there. And then the rest of the configuration, if we scroll back up, I had to create a project on the MongoDB site, create a cluster, for the MongoDB site and create a project IP whitelist so that my app running in Google Cloud can connect to this. And I just did allow all from any IP address. Obviously you wanna lock that down a little bit. And finally, I created a database user for the application and I gave it like permissions to do everything cause I was kind of in a hurry. But again, in reality, you would probably want to pare down those permissions to exactly what it needs for that particular database for the application. And then at the very bottom of this configuration, I spit out the project ID and the connection string for the MongoDB. And then I can use that information with the G Cloud SDK to deploy my Node.js application. So that's a brief tour of the things that I learned about using Terraform with Google Cloud. Let's just review those briefly. One, if you're gonna create a project, you have to create a service account that's capable of creating projects and associating them with the billing account. So either pre-create a project or create your own project. And I'll include a link on how to set up that service account that somebody else wrote a whole blog post about. It was extremely useful, so thank you for that. So if you're gonna create a project, you need a bunch of information to do that. Number two, everything lives in a project in Google. Number three, the APIs you need to use are not enabled by default on that project. So if you're creating a new project, you kind of have to enable them. And number four, when you're gonna use the Google App Engine, everything that you configure about that App Engine pretty much happens somewhere else. So Terraform just creates the App Engine and then it's up to you to use a separate YAML file to do the config. So that's what I learned about Google Cloud and also that it doesn't have a native MongoDB service. Lots of fun, uh, an interesting time. It's always an adventure when you get into multi-cloud and that's what I did. I will add this specific configuration to my Terraform Tuesday repository if you're interested and I'll include that in the description as well. But that does it for me. I'm off to go make some tacos. Tomorrow's tech analysis and we're in the middle of VMworld so I'm probably gonna be talking about VMworld 2020. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, everybody. Thanks.